What is up, species? Welcome to a brand new Flash video. Now, this is my, if you can tell by the title already, my review, my overall review for The Flash Season 6 as a whole. Yes, I have shaved. I have de-aged by five years. Come on, let's just laugh. Get it over and done with. Come on. <laughs> You done? No, but really, uh, I thought, uh, yeah, I do this every year, to be honest, I think. I did it last year, probably the year before for the Flash Season 4, and I thought, oh yeah, I totally forgot to do my overall thoughts. But, you know, of course, I do have to bear in mind, we didn't finish this season, but I still think I can give my general overview on just everything. Because the season's over now, uh, obviously, last season wasn't so great. I loved parts of it, obviously, you know, I, I, I went into that season loving the premise of the Flash family, Barry's daughter coming, and all of that stuff. But then yeah, Cicada and things like that. So at the end of the video, I'll put season six in my the flash season rankings If you will, I'm quite an indecisive person when it comes to that But you know, I, I definitely feel like I need to put season six somewhere now But one thing I really want to encourage all of you to do as well is to leave your comments as always in the comment section down below With uh, what you thought of this season where you think it ranks in all of the seasons of the flash Why what reasons you love it? What reasons you didn't like certain parts and what improvements you would make for season seven? I suppose but also go ahead guys like this video everyone probably every youtuber or most youtubers ask you to do that They ask you for a reason because it really does help out the channel I don't want to sound like I'm begging but honestly it just does it really helps and it takes two seconds of your time uh, So if you are enjoying it, I'd really appreciate that. So let's start off with the flash season six We've got a new showrunner this year ladies and gentlemen not just ladies. Um, and I, I just feel like that was one of the best things that could have happened to this show. Granted that I don't want to give off the impression that this season was absolutely monumentally phenomenal. Uh, but it definitely was a step up in many ways. Thanks to Eric Wallace. Now Todd Helbing did do some good things. But for some reason he seemed to have dropped the ball. Uh, season 4, season 5 just, just weren't really where a lot of fans such as myself... Yeah, season four, I don't even need to get into. I, I really didn't like the tone of that. I know everyone has different tastes without going into that too much. Getting back to the point at hand, we had the Flash season six. Eric Wallace wanted to do a graphic novel type formula in terms of, you know, with graphic novels, you have volumes and, and quite often in those story arcs that happen, you have the Flash going on to different villains and that offers an engaging story because the thing about the CW is, and I always echo this and the reason why I prefer other streaming or just you know kind of um, you know platforms like DC Universe for example I, I, I cover the flash for a reason I still really like it but DC Universe Despite, you know, what you, whatever you will say about Titans and its issues, I really enjoyed Swamp Thing. Uh, Doom Patrol is, is just one of the greatest comic book shows out there. Um, I'm forgetting about Stargirl. Uh, so far, two episodes in, I've seen three. Very cohesive, very engaging. All of these series have one thing in common. Less episodes. So let me go to the max episode length of, uh, for example, Doom Patrol. 15 episodes. If the CW was to shave off at least seven episodes... It would be a lot more engaging. I'm not saying filler is always a bad thing. You're probably thinking, where is where are you going with this? What's this, you know, how does this pertain to your review of The Flash Season 6? It's because even though we still were meant to get, you know, 22 episodes, and we didn't because we got like, uh, well, we, we, we couldn't finish the season off because of the pandemic. It's still, through Eric Wallace, including this whole graphic novel approach, added two villains and that's the thing I was so excited about this season and I'll get onto the villains in a second but it makes the story engaging blood work for the first half it's like its own story then we had crisis that was supercharged going through his story and then the back half the mirror master with Ava McCulloch or mirror mistress they, they never really actually gave her a name both are relevant in the comics there but who knows what they're gonna do um so yeah I, I have to give this season kudos for that we've got a new showrunner he tried things I don't think it completely hit the ground running but he definitely hit the ground of a jog where er uh, Todd Helbing if he would have you know show run this season probably would have just hit the floor and uh, uh, broke his teeth okay that's a bit too harsh I'm, I'm sorry Todd no I'm just saying yeah and if it wasn't for this new formulaic approach I think I would have really struggled with the flash this year granted that it could have gone very successful with Todd Helbing it could have been like another chance for him to do uh, something uh, very successful but I'm just saying the chances are if if he if they wouldn't have changed up like they did for Eric Wallace I would have been like damn we had season four and season five and now season six was just, uh, I would have been like, okay, is it time for me to drop the flash? Like, I, I would have been very tempted. Now, 
I'm giving this a lot of praise so far uh, for Eric Wallace, but not everything was perfect. So looking back on blood work, a lot of people I know who I talk to about this show personally, we're all fans of The Flash, you know, my friends. We watch it and blood work, I don't have anything to nitpick, but we all agree that the actor was amazing, the story wasn't, you know, bad or anything, but it just wasn't uh, stellar. You know, you can't put him up against, I think I can speak for a lot of people here, I can't speak for everyone that, you know, can you put blood work, entertainment, quality next to Zoom, next to the reverse Flash? I don't think so. And maybe that sounds like a stupid example to some of you because it's like, well, of course that wouldn't um, compare. But I still feel like it's very important to make those comparisons because at the end of the day, they were season villains. So when you're bringing in new season villains, whatever character they're going to be, whatever powers they have, whatever meta they are, whether that's a speedster or a non-speedster, your, your goal always as a showrunner or, you know, as a writer's room for whatever villains you've chose to commit to this season to, you know, engage and entertain your fans, you want to always strive for the best and I just don't think that was achievable with blood work it was it was interesting enough I think I uh, and if you guys remember back to my reviews of season uh, six at the beginning I was very interested in how the back half of season six would come across to all of us because I said that yes blood work this is interesting a much more direct season as I keep saying because we've got two villains we knew that at the time we had no idea who the second villain was now we do it's Ava McCulloch but at the time I was like oh I'm excited for this but also it had the extra rocket th uh, fuel thrust of crisis on infinite earths um so you know I felt like that was quite entertaining I felt like it did supplement blood work very well because looking back on blood work he was interesting I even said in my most recent reviews when we saw blood work again when Mirrorverse Iris went to go see blood work blah 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 and he, you know he's obviously got a grander plan people tying in or is he gonna escape all that aside for a minute I was like oh yeah looking back at it he is quite interesting but at the time and and still in a lot of retrospect if there wasn't crisis on infinite earth so I would have found it fairly mediocre let me put it that way now I can't give you exact reasons why I just felt like the story wasn't as a, well I guess I could give you a uh, previous villain examples I couldn't match it to the quality and the entertainment of that it just felt like it was okay and it was entertaining at other points but I don't know maybe maybe it wasn't so up my alley I know some people in the comments have read I read all your comments some of you are like I love blood work more than this villain or that villain so fair enough there but think for a minute if they stripped Barry in the early part of season six uh, going to see that vision of crisis in the future and all of those little entertainment factors that I felt really propelled that first half of the season do you think it would have been as good I think we would have you know enjoyed it but as I keep saying it would have been mediocre or just maybe that's a bit too blunt for me to say I think you know I wouldn't say it's great wouldn't say it's mediocre maybe but somewhere in between there but then there's still zoom up here and stuff like that uh so that's my thoughts on the first half but I still can't deny that on the scoreboard rating it is already miles ahead of Chris Klein's cicada and and and, and the stuff that happened there then we moved on to mirror Mistress or Mirror Master Ava McCulloch. Now, yet again, I really appreciate the twist they did this season. I keep repeating myself here, but yet again, new story, new engagingness. You know, when you have one villain spanned across 22 episodes, I don't feel like I need to tell a lot of you what that can do to a season. It, it, it can drag it out. It, it, it goes without saying. Sometimes it's been very entertaining. Now I've pulled it off before with season two, like Zoom. I keep using him as, as an example because Zoom's story, season two, was arguably one of the best seasons. The problem with the Ava McCulloch storyline is whilst I enjoyed it, the Mirrorverse Iris stuff really got dragged out. I have to bear in mind what happened in the back half of the season because we didn't finish it and maybe our minds would be slightly different or my mind would be slightly made up different because if we had the true ending, it would have been something really entertaining. But the reason why I don't want to fully subscribe to that idea of what I'm putting forward there is because... Even if the artificial speed force did get created towards the end, which it, which it would have, I'm guessing, and the whole thorn cliffhanger happened, you still can't deny how long something got dragged out. And I think that's the issue there for me and a lot of other fans is that it was entertaining, but it, imagine if they just accelerated it 
uh, down to a, f a few less episodes and Ava got out much earlier and then there was just more Ava versus Barry and Team Flash. That would have been a lot more interesting, I, I think. Also, even without finishing a season, I feel like I can say the artificial speed for stuff got dragged out a bit as well because there was several times in my reviews and I've read, as I keep saying, lots of your comments and you a lot of you agreed the same, that you, we all thought that Barry, like it, it was made very blatant. Like he had a freaking watch like this and had a speed gauge on it and it, it was made obvious that it was meant to run out any time now when he's as soon as he put it on kind of thing but it was dragged out each and every episode kind of thing to the point where i thought okay this is where he's going to have his last droplet of speed and then they're going to have to fire up the uh artificial speed force little science fair experiment they've got going on there and we'll get it but no it actually happened again to the next episode and again and again and again and again so yeah i felt like that was just uh, if that happened a little bit early and then we had a few more episodes despite the season ending early of Barry's weird ass new speed force that I'm sure as Eric Wallace teased will just change the Flash mythology moving forward in terms of the CW Arrowverse canon it, it, it would have just been so exciting but you know I'm still very excited about that at the beginning of season 7. Now as for characters I have to be really blunt and honest here I don't care about Camilla I don't think she's coming back I just don't care I, I don't care i just don't I, I, I nothing against the actress i just i don't feel like she when she was in scenes whether that is how she was meant to act or not it just wasn't i, I don't know what i can say about that cisco's new girlfriend but i don't think she's been invited back for season seven so i can't wait to see how in the story they're gonna um address that you know like did, did they just break up or, or or what i have no idea allegra I would say she's definitely more interesting than um, Camilla by miles. But even then, when you compare her to be like for when Ralph Dibney was introduced, there's not even a comparison. Ralph Dibney definitely rubbed me up the wrong way to begin with, and a lot of people, but his character arc was very interesting with the person he became. Allegra isn't quite Camilla levels of acting, I would say. Allegra does go there sometimes, where I'm just like, that was just very... I don't know, but I, I get how she's tied to Nash. I guess I'm willing to see Allegra carry on since I, I believe we are Allegra is going to carry on to next season. But I'm still just a bit like, I wish it was just Iris, Barry, Nash Wells, Cisco, Caitlin, and Ralph. Maybe you could chuck Sue in there as a recurring role, sorry. But as Allegra, I, these little extra, and we got Chester P. Runk. That's another thing, actually. I enjoyed him. A lot of people didn't. Out of all three of those new characters, Allegra, Camilla, and Chester, I would have Chester. I know that sounds weird to some of you, but Chester came off a bit eccentric at times, but it felt like it was almost a soft segue into if Cisco or someone like that was going to leave. Chester made me kind of laugh. I, I I felt like they should have toned it down a teeny bit, but that usually happens uh, when just bringing in a new character to the show and the actor, they, it, they, will, they will find like this equilibrium with what works and what doesn't. And I, I already felt like Chester was good and that, that they, they would have found that soon after. So yeah, I guess that's my thoughts on the new characters. Sue was, Sue was okay, but... Um, we'll have to see what comes out uh, with her. I wouldn't want her to be a series regular all the time, but I would have her over Allegra. I know this sounds like a lot of hate, but like I just don't feel like there's a whole bunch of um, entertainment or engagement for me personally with Camilla being in the show. Allegra was okay with her story, but it, it still just felt like Let's just introduce another character. But my Flash rankings, I feel like kind of disingenuous saying this because I haven't, you know, ranking it at least. I haven't watched, rewatched these seasons in a long time. In a long, 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 long time. So I'm probably not going to remember things right. But I've always had like the hashtag unpopular opinion of I really, well, I don't really like season three, but, um, and there are so many issues with it, but I, lo I love uh, the, the premise of it and the dark, more dark tone, you know, and there's such a stark contrast change from season three to the eccentric, lighthearted season four to the cringy line, couples therapy, let's go to a funeral and just somehow try and get married, Barry and Iris thing, you know what I mean? Oh, God, I can't understand that. Um, but yeah, so it goes for me, I think season one will always be the best for me. Season two is better in other ways, but season one is like the OG, oh my God, you just started with the reverse 
reverse flash in this kind of works so well by the end and the, everything like that and the Tom Cavanaugh Harrison Wells reveal with people theorizing about Eddie Thorne I think you guys can understand why I like season one as the best over season two season two of course comes second then it would be season six then I think it would be season three I think I would have said season four because the thinker was a better villain but like everything else just puts me off so I have personal preference I would say season three next and then um season four and then season five uh I would have said season five and I want to almost because of how I really don't like season four's tone and everything like that but season five was just so bad with Cicada I think that's how it is season one season two season six season three season for season five. I could be wrong. I could be talking crap right now, but I think that's how it's going. Anyway, though, guys, I know I didn't go into absolutely every nook and cranny I could have, but that was my general off the top of my head kind of thoughts about The Flash season six as a whole. It was like a solid uh, kind of soft reboot of The Flash almost. It, it obviously was the same in many ways, but that's why I say very soft reboot. I would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. What are your thoughts on my thoughts? What did you like? What are your rankings? Where does it come in? Does it come in third for me? So I'd really appreciate a like guys i really 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 do appreciate that it does help out a lot so thank you for all of those of you who are liking it right now if you want to support me further i do have a patreon page i do have a join button on the channel but also you can talk to me further in my discord server the links to that will be in a top pin comment or in the description down below but thank you so much for watching everybody hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you speedsters in the next video goodbye